Hello and welcome back. Lecture 8-3, Filter Design, Chevy Chef Filters. The objectives of today's lecture are to describe the process for filter design as it applies to Chevy Chef filters, to describe the characteristics of Chevy Chef filters, and to design Chevy Chef filters to meet design specifications. Theory, using the equal ripple approach for filter design by allowing some ripple in the pass band, it creates a loss curve that rises more rapidly in the transition band. The sharpest possible rise occurs when all the ripple peaks are equal and limited only by the pass band space. A filter with an equal ripple pass band is called a Chebyshev filter that has the following shape and frequency response. So here we make the vertical axis, which is the magnitude of the loss in decibels, and the horizontal axis which is omega. And what you see here is there's going to now be ripple in the pass band. And then we have our stop band, which may or may not have ripple. And compare this to what we originally had for our Butterworth filter, which was maximally flat in both the pass band and the stop band. So here's the Butterworth filter. And then here represents our maximum pass band ripple. And here represents our minimum stop band loss. And remember this top curve is our Chevy Chev filter. where this is omega P and this is omega S. So the magnitude squared of the Chevy Chef filter is one over one plus epsilon squared C sub M squared omega over omega P, where C sub M omega over omega P is the nth degree Chevy Chef polynomial, which can be defined as C sub M omega over omega P, omega P is equal to the cosine of n arc cosine of omega over omega p when the frequency is less than omega p and the hyperbolic cosine in the inverse hyperbolic cosine omega over omega p when omega is greater than omega p. There should be a way for you to calculate hyperbolic cosines and inverse hyperbolic cosines using your calculator so you don't have to do that by hand. But the hyperbolic cosine of theta is equal to e to the theta plus e to the negative theta divided by two. There are two types of Chevy Chev filters. Type one has a frequency response that is not monotonic in the pass band, but is monotonic in the stop band, which means it has, it has ripple in the pass band. Its frequency response ripples in the pass band. Once again, this ripple allows the transition from the pass band to the stop band to be faster than a Butterworth filter of the same order. The more ripple we allow in the pass band, the narrower the transition band can be. The type two Chevy Chef filter has a monotonic pass band and ripple in the stop band. There's also an elliptic filter, which has ripple in both the pass band and stop band. And for the same filter order has an even narrower transition band than either of the two Chevy Chef filters and obviously the Butterworth filter. And the Bessel filter is optimized for linearity of the phase in the pass band rather than flat magnitude pass band response in the pass or stop band or narrow transition band. So the difference between the Bessel and the others is that you, the benefit of the Bessel has to do with the phase versus ripples or maximally flat in transition or pass band. So here we have a plot of the loss in decibels for a seventh order Butterworth and Chevy Chef filters. The main thing to notice is that one has a ripple in the pass band and it has a steeper transition period, which means this one is a Chevy Chev filter and that the Butterworth filter is maximally flat in the pass band, but the transition is slower. So this one is the Butterworth filter. Here we have some examples of transfer functions for Chevy Chev filters. And just like for Butterworth filters, the order of the filter represents the order of the denominator of the transfer function. Remember, the transfer function had the form h of s equals one over 
the denominator of s. So once again, we have all pole filters. And the first order is s over sigma p plus 1. Unfortunately, there is no nice pattern like there was for Butterworth filters because these are much, much more complicated polynomials. So for example, for n is equal to 2, it's 2 times s over omega p squared plus 1.2872 times s over omega p plus 1.4142. Example, suppose we required omega p to equal 2 pi 1000 radians per second and omega s is equal to 2 pi 2000 radians per second with a 3 decibel maximum pass band ripple and 40 decibel minimum stop band loss. Define, design a Chebyshev filter to meet the required specifications. These are the identical specifications that we had for the Butterworth filter design problem because we want to compare the performance between each. So once again, I'm going to calculate L of J omega P, which equals 10 log base 10 of 1 plus epsilon squared, which equals 3 decibels. So epsilon squared is approximately 1, just like it was before. Note that this is consistent with our Chebyshev polynomial definition because that was equal to when omega was less than omega p, 10 log base 10, 1 plus epsilon squared, c sub n squared of 1, which equals 10 log base 10, 1 plus epsilon squared, cosine of n, arc cosine of 1, which equals 10 log base 10 of 1 plus epsilon squared, the cosine of n times 0, which equals 10 log base 10 of 1 plus epsilon squared times 1, which is the same as what we had here. L of j omega s is equal to 10 log base 10 of the quantity, 1 plus 1 squared, that's epsilon, the hyperbolic cosine squared of n, the inverse hyperbolic cosine of 2 pi 2,000 divided by 2 pi 1,000, which equals 10 log base 10 of 1 plus the hyperbolic cosine squared of n, the arc hyperbolic cosine of 2. And remember, all of this has to equal 40 decibels. So using your calculator to solve, you would get n is equal to 4.02. We always round up, so we would use n is equal to 5. So this would be a fifth order Chebyshev filter, and you would compare this to n is equal to 7 for the Butterworth. So you now see that a less order filter will achieve the same design specifications if you use a Chebyshev filter. Chebyshev filters are also all pole filters like Butterworth filters, but it will have different passive filter component values in order to achieve the Chebyshev filter. Phase response. An ideal low pass filter has H of J omega equals the magnitude of H of J omega e to the negative J omega T naught, or that's equal to K rect of omega over 2B e to the negative J omega T naught. So remember, if I made a quick sketch of what the phase looked like for the ideal low pass filter, the angle H of J omega was a straight line with a slope of negative T naught, or the equation of the line would be negative T naught omega. And this represents a delay of t naught seconds. So if the angle h of j omega deviates from this straight line, which we know it will because we cannot create an ideal low pass filter, the result is called a delay distortion. 
Different frequency components in the input are delayed by different amounts. The following graph shows examples of the phase response for a Butterworth and Chebyshev 7th order filter. What you should see here is that the steeper the transition, the more delay distortion there is. Because for these, we would call this part to the left, the pass band, and this part to the right, the stop band. And then what you see right here in the middle, where we have the transition, because the Chevy Chef filter has the steeper transition, it has more delayed distortion. Since the Butterworth has a slower transition, it is more linear than the Chevy Chef phase. Group delay. Group delay is a measure of the distortion from the linear phase, and the delay is defined to be negative the derivative of h of j omega with respect to d omega. Ideally, you would want tg of omega to be equal to t naught, kind of like the ideal low pass filter plot I showed earlier, for all omega, or at least for all omega in the pass band. It does not matter so much about the stop band because at that point the magnitude is heavily attenuated. It is typically easier to see delayed distortion on a plot of Tg of omega than on a plot of the angle of h of j omega. Note that group delay is not the same as phase delay, although the equations are similar. Phase delay is the angle h of j omega with respect to omega. So here we have a plot of the group delay, Tg of omega, for the seventh order Butterworth and Chebyshev filters. And what you should see here, it is a lot easier to see the delay distortion for the Chebyshev filter for this one because of that, that peak right in the middle, in the middle of the transition band. And here we would have, once again, the Butterworth filter. And the part where the distortion is the largest is in the transition. Note that a large delay distortion near the passband edge is typical. It's a typical characteristic of filters with a sharp cutoff, such as the Chebyshev filter. And the Bessel filter is designed to make Tg of omega as flat as possible for omega less than omega p. The cost is that Bessel filters cut off gradually compared to Butterworth and Chebyshev filters, so it has the slowest cutoff. Note in this plot we had here, this represents omega p and this would represent omega s. And this concludes lecture 8-3 on filter design for Chevy Chef filters.